Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Beyond words, beyond the battle, beyond the outcry lies silence. For what words and what warring and what anger has words enough? It is sacred, this silence, and holy, this remembering. For only silent remembering can carry enough pain and truth together to whisper again, it is enough. They shall not grow old, as we that are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Good morning, and welcome as we gather on this Sunday, the 7th of November, 2021, to remember Christ in communion, to remember the soldiers who gave of their lives in the wars of the last century, many others who have given of their lives in service to community and country in other ways in the past year or more. We think of family members, of neighbors and friends who have been a part of those efforts over the years to give of themselves in service for country and community in many different ways. Remembrance Day is a special time. We hope that the service today reflects on. I want to thank Joanne Morrison and Larry Morrison Sandy Olenberger, uh, Trent Tarlson, and Margaret Sarita for their roles in preparing and planning today's service. For those who are reading scriptures or prayers or leading in other ways through the service, thank you for your contributions as well. A number of people to keep in our prayers this week. Sadly, on Wednesday, we learned that uh, Pat. Patrick Wright had died on Monday. Pat has been a long time member of the congregation and we uh, have mourned with him as he lost Marianne a few years ago. Uh, this week we are offering our prayers for Tracy and Cynthia and their families as uh, they remember and celebrate Pat's life. Also on uh, Wednesday, uh, Joan Lepatka's father, Raphael, passed away, and they are preparing for a service to celebrate his life. In the next few weeks, we offer our prayers to Joan and family as they mourn the loss of her father and uh, as they celebrate his life. There are no particular announcements uh, for the coming period of time, we continue to be under the uh, restrictions of the current uh, COVID uh, regulations, which say that we can have one-third of capacity in our church services. 
Uh, next Sunday, we will begin the activities of Christmas as the Charlie Brown tree will be placed in the sanctuary and we'll begin to gather mitts and scarves and other items of warm clothing for those in the inner city and on the streets of our city. Uh, the clothes will eventually be distributed by the Bissell Center and the Youth Empowerment Support Services. And, uh, Hopefully you'll be able to contribute with that. There will also be announcements in Messenger and in other ways about White Gift Sunday that's upcoming on the 5th of December. I hope that you enjoy today's service and that you enjoy one another's company. Blessings this week. Please join me in the call to worship. Peace when trouble seethes. Peace when views are rigid. Peace when pain persists. Peace when loss deadens. Peace when dreams are lost. Peace to counter injustice. The deep peace of God that goes beyond human understanding. Let us pray for peace as we worship today. Let us pray. Remember the suffering of the world. Remember the sacrifice of the soldiers, civilians, and peacemakers. Remember the Holy Spirit who leads us into the ways of peace and light. We celebrate your presence Holy One, and live for a world made holy. Amen.
God of every nation, as we remember those who gave their life for our sake, let us be stirred into action in their memory. We confess that we have not done all that is possible to promote peace and justice in our world. We have not loved our neighbors, let alone our enemies. Forgive us for failing to live up to your commandments. Empower us to work for your kingdom in this world and welcome us by your grace into your kingdom in the next. Amen. Let your breath, O God, fill us with life anew that we might love as you love and do what you would do. Let us know the peace that comes from good relations with each other and with you. The Creator has chosen to walk with us. We are blessed. Amen. have labored in vain. Unless God watches over the city. Those who keep watch stay awake in vain. In vain you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For those whom God loves are getting sleep. Like arrows in a warrior's hand, so indeed are the children of one's youth. Happy are those who have their quiver full of them. They will not be put to shame when they meet their adversaries at the gate. The first scripture reading today is from Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 24 to 28. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The second reading is from Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. 
Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, the actions of our lives, always be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the fall of 2006, as I prepared to move from Tabor to Edmonton, I was invited to dinner at a family's home late in October, it was shortly before Remembrance Day, and we gathered over at dinner table and visited and talked, and in the course of the conversation, the family talked about their connections to the Second World War, to a great uncle who had served in the battlefields of Europe during the Second World War. And as they talked, they told his story of being injured, of being missing in battle, and of being taken prisoner by the Germans and held in a prison camp. They produced, as we talked, the letters that the family had received, telling them first that the soldier had been missing in battle and was presumed dead, and then several months later, another letter informing them that the Red Cross had visited this soldier who they had found to be alive and in a prisoner of war camp somewhere in Europe. The letters told the story of his injury and capture over a period of time. They were a variety of letters from the military, from the Red Cross, from the soldier who had been taken into captivity. 
they were a profound glimpse into the life of that family during 1943 and 1944 when the world was at war and soldiers were seeking to bring an end to the greatest war of all times, the war to end all wars. It is those soldiers and others, not only in World War II, but in World War I, the Korean War, Vietnam, Afghanistan, and other places that we remember today as we mark this year's Remembrance Day. We are reminded that the stories of each individual have shaped our world in ways that we often cannot fully comprehend or understand. One of the things that's most striking to me about the stories of the wars is the relatively young ages of the men and women who offered themselves on the battlefields. As we read the scripture this morning, we hear Jesus watching and speaking about the temple. He's teaching at first, telling the disciples to beware of those who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in marketplaces to have the best seats in the synagogues, places of honor at banquets. He's warning them that they are often more interested in themselves than the well-being of the community. Sitting down opposite the treasury, he's watching the crowd putting money, making donations to the synagogue. Rich people who are putting in large sums and along comes a widow. A widow who takes two coins and places them into the treasury. Jesus calls his disciples to them and says, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all that she had to live on. The passage, for me, connects profoundly with Remembrance Day, with the lives of those young men who gave of themselves in the battlefields of the great wars. They had, at the height of their lives, opportunities that stretched in front of them that we cannot imagine. Many of them came from farms of Alberta and Saskatchewan, Manitoba, from the streets of the cities of Calgary and Edmonton and Vancouver. They left behind families who loved them and sought to support them through projects throughout the war, sending care packages to those who were fighting. Those young men and women who gave their lives are not unlike the widow who gave of her two coins to the treasury. Those young men and women gave everything that they had that we might all have life. The passage from Hebrews speaks of Christ's sacrifice for all of us, for all of creation, saying that it wasn't necessary for Christ to offer himself again and again for the foundation of the world, but to appear once at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. The author of Hebrews is telling us that it is Christ's sacrifice on the cross that redeems the world in God's eyes. As we remember those who lost their lives in the wars of the last century and more, we can take heart that, like Christ, they have given of themselves that we might know an abundance and beauty of creation in the midst of the darkness that surrounds us. 
as I walked on Saturday morning this week, I watched 500 geese gathered on Bomaris Lake. As I went around the lake, every few minutes there would be a noise in one corner of the lake and a group of geese would take off and fly first north and then turn towards the east, moving, I suppose, towards the south eventually. It was interesting that those geese took off like clockwork every few moments. A flock of 40 or so would take off and begin to fly and they would be followed by another flock within a few moments. Our ability to appreciate and know the beauty of creation, the joy of the change of seasons, all of those things comes from not only the sacrifice of Christ 2,000 years ago, but also the sacrifice of soldiers in the wars that have sought to allow us to live in a democratic and free society, to know the abundance that surrounds us in all that we do and all that we are. It's a point of remembrance day. It's also the point of communion as we are called in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup to remember Jesus crucified and risen, to remember that love given that we all may live. Amen. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts in prayer. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. Loving God, source of all, we thank and praise you with our lips and with our lives that having created us 
and all things through your word, you welcome our prayer and praise. For the goodness of creation and the glory of redemption, we praise you. For the law of holiness, inviting our obedience and the call of prophets, rebuking our disobedience, we praise you. Therefore, with all that is seen and unseen, and with all the faithful of every time and place, we join in this hymn of praise and thanksgiving. Loving God, Holy One, we offer you praise and thanksgiving over this bread and cup, because in Jesus Christ, your only Son, you have joined yourself forever to us, uniting heaven and earth. Now, therefore, we gratefully remember Jesus' birth into our humanity, baptism for our sin, compassion for our suffering, intimacy with our frailty, rebuke of our pride, bearing of the cross with its death, and rising from the tomb by the power of God. We proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. Loving God, creative power, Blessing your name, we seek your spirit. Come to us and bless these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, the sign and seal of our forgiveness in him, and our adoption as the children of God. As we eat and drink together, make us one with Christ and one in Christ, a sign of his eternal reign in all the world. This sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we offer you, loving God, through Jesus Christ our Savior, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in a room in Jerusalem. After a meal, he took a loaf of bread, and he broke it, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Each time you taste of it, remember me. In the same way, after the meal was over, Jesus took a cup, and it too he blessed, and he shared it with his disciples, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant. Each time you taste of it, remember me.
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world united in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. is yours to share. The peace of Christ is yours to extend and the power of the Holy Spirit is yours to offer. Amen.